Hey folks, I'm Milo Tash. All right, I've got something spicy to chat about and I'm a little salty about it. Today we're gonna be talking about outdoor spice shakers. <laughs> Apparently I have a lot to say about spice shakers, who knew, so buckle up. I love cooking simple and delicious food in the woods. I love it so much that I have the world's tiniest frying pan to bring with me on day hikes so I can rustle up a little slice of ham or an egg after a worthy day on the trail. And what goes hand in hand with food? Spices. And if you're like me, you've always thrown spices in whatever container you can muster last minute before hitting the road. And that container could take the form of mini sandwich baggies, a pill bottle, Q-tip holder, tiny screw containers, and the like. I don't know why the urge to find something smaller to put spices in besides their original containers is so strong. I'm not the type of hiker or camper that really counts ounces, so it shouldn't be any problem, but I feel like I'm admitting defeat when I bring the entire container of black pepper along with the grinder and all in my backpack. So this got me thinking that there needed to be a better way, so I never have to think about spices and their keepers ever again, but they're always there and at the ready. So I did some research and I was surprised at what I found. Let's start with REI. REI has an assortment of small containers that could easily fit spices and some that are made specifically for them. The first one we'll look at is from GSI. They make the outdoor spice missile that has the ability to hold six different spices in one vessel, but with tiny little compartments. I love the one-stop shop approach, but with review after review of broken lids, and to put it in Steve G's words, if you're looking for a spice system that doubles as a car jack, the missile's weight for what it can do ratio is skewed. Also, I tried to look for more relevant reviews on this one. Uh, nine years feels like a lifetime ago, but apparently I'm the first to strike up the conversation around spices and their holders in a while. GSI also makes a spice rack, which looks like it's made of the same stuff as their spice missile, and it has far less reviews. Folks seem to think it's fairly decent, but cumbersome with their lids and still weighing quite a bit. I figure you might as well bring your full-size spice containers and then you'll have more of the spice and it'll probably come out as the same weight. Uh, these are the only two REI-supported dedicated spice holders on their website, and when you search spices or spice holder or cooking accessories, this is all you get. When you search the general internet, you get all sorts of kooky ideas for spice wrangling. Etsy, of all places, has some really unique ideas for sale, like this travel spice set, which actually doesn't look half bad with self-contained individual spice tubes, eight of them, and their own pouch container. Amazon's got more heavyweight options, some faux bushcrafty options, also uh, the old everything in one plus the spices option. And after taking a general peruse through all of these, I started to think about how I personally use spices in the backcountry. I'm a simple person while camping. I like salt and pepper and sometimes garlic powder and cayenne. At home, I get a little more creative, but I rarely need more than these four spices in a pinch when I'm out hiking or backpacking. I'm curious what you bring camping for spices or what spices you feel are essential for you to cook outdoors. Uh, leave me a comment down below and let me know your top picks. Also, if you're enjoying this video, give it a quick like by hitting the button down below and subscribe if you want to see more of this stuff. For me, though, I needed a spice system that was small enough that was saving weight by not bringing the whole spice in their original containers and big enough that it was worthwhile transferring it to last however long I'd be doing meals. It definitely didn't need to hold six plus spices. REI did have one last curveball option, which was pretty unique and multi-purpose in a good way and one that I probably would have gone with if I had decided to stay with purchasing from REI, and that's the Human Gear Go Tub. The Go Tub comes in a three pack, and it is a tiny container that opens by squeezing the sides to release the lid. It easily presses back on to close too. Uh, they claim this can all be done with one hand, which would be handy while cooking, and they're advertised as great for holding pills and knickknacks, earplugs, spices, change, and other small items. From the reviews, it looks like most folks use these for travel for earplugs and vitamins. I could totally see that. Uh, when I saw them in person at REI, they were light as a feather and they look like something you'd keep in your personal items bag. I didn't go with these and decided to continue my hunt for two reasons. Uh, number one is they felt like if I put heavy gear on them or leaned up against them in my pack, they'd crack. And two, when my hands are dirty from being outdoors, I'd rather have a shaker-style dispensary for my spice than having to open a lid and pinch it out. 
I still might pick a setup of these though for uh, what everyone else seems to use them for, which are pills and whatnot. And Human Gear makes really unique stuff and I've appreciated the thoughtfulness in their design. All right, let's finally chat about the spice holders I decided to rumble with. And that's the Alpine Salt and Pepper Shakers and the Alpine Spice Shaker from MSR. I've been tickled pink with these bad boys since getting them. I purchased three different units, two of the shakers with dual chambers and one unit with the single chamber. I currently have one for pepper and cayenne, one for garlic powder and onion powder, and the single chamber shaker with salt since I use the spice the most when boiling or for taste. I have loved these scents getting them, and I've got some features to highlight here. First and foremost, they're strong, without weighing a lot. You'd have to really be trying to crack this plastic. They're made of a hardened plastic, both the lids and the containers, and they could easily be stepped on, driven over, or whatever you like to do with your spice shakers, and they only weigh 0.3 of an ounce. The shakers also have rubber gasket seals on both the refill lids and the shaker openings. This makes it moisture resistant and no seasoning is getting out unwantedly. I love the dual chamber shakers and they are generously sized. I have easily made these last for a whole season worth of weekend hiking trips, camping, and cooking without refills. The convenience of being able to open and close the lid for use with one hand while cooking is fantastic and everything is attached to each other which is one less thing to lose in my opinion. The containers themselves are not perfectly round and they're slightly textured. I found them easy to grasp due to their shape, and when I tap the shaker while holding it with one hand with my index finger to get some spice out, the flat surface is there for my finger to get a good thud against. And you know when the lid is actually shut, it clicks into place. The single container has a hole that is slightly larger and not divided like the dual chamber shaker's hole. This allows me to do more pouring and less shaking or tapping to get the spice out, which I think is nice for that type of use. The dual chamber shaker hole is divided and creates more of an even distributing of the spice, which is perfect if I'm shaking it onto my food directly versus cooking with it in the pot. I like having my salt in the single container so I can get more of it out when I'm using it to salt water or meat. Okay, let's talk about the drawbacks of these little dudes. You can't see into the containers very easily to assess the height of the remaining spice and what spice is actually in it. The plastic of the container is slightly fogged out due to the texture, except for one line that is clear along the edges of the shaker. This is meant to help you see clearly into the container and assess what levels and determine the contents, but it's kind of hard to tell. It seems like the single unit container is also easier to see into for some reason. And yeah, it crossed my mind that the salt is white and it's easier to see compared to the other spices and it seems silly that this would be different from the other ones, but I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell without me fully emptying my shaker, which I'm sorry I'm lazy now that I got them all filled up. Regardless, it's hard to see what's in them. I do dig that they're slightly darker color though, which is possibly used to help preserve the spices from light exposure, but I might be stretching it there. Uh, and also, let's be honest, these shakers are usually sitting in the dark of my backpack or inside a dark tub when they're at home, so it's not really benefiting much from that if that is indeed the purpose. But I'd rather these just simply be a lighter color plastic so I can see into them. Let's talk about filling the containers, which can be an ordeal. It might just be me, but I had to use the sharp side of a knife or something to insert into both sides at the top of the shaker, or use a pliers to pull the cap off after the first initial fills. And that loosened over time, so it became less of an issue, but at first it was really hard to get the cap off to fill it up. It also has this rubber gasket, which is dope, but it makes that all a lot harder at first. And when I used a tiny funnel, it made it super easy to fill it up. But if you don't have that, you'd have to kind of get creative or just use a piece of paper rolled up to pour the spices in, which also isn't that hard. Also, the lids to the shaker holes are only held on by this tiny bend in the plastic that they're made of. I've had that same concern with my foldable plastic cutting boards. I could see this easily breaking after many opens or tearing or something. So be it if it does, but it would be hard to find that tiny little lid piece each time to reattach it after opening if it does tear, and I don't see any way of reattaching it. I suppose we'll just cross that bridge should we ever get there. 
And last but not least, the rubber gaskets. Rubber wears out as it ages, and particularly the rubber that's been around these days. I have camping gear from my dad from the 70s that has rubber on it, and it's still kicking, but I own newer items with rubber that has worn away in less than five years. MSR's website has an overwhelmingly positive review from customers on these shakers, but the only poor review was due to the rubber gaskets crumbling over time. Mind you, this was one review that was from 2017. I have had these for over a year now and no issues, but I guess time will tell. I've found the MSR Alpine shakers to be the most functional, sturdy, compact, modern shakers on the market. I'm surprised REI doesn't sell these, but I hope they do so in the future. In the meantime, you can pick them up from Amazon or MSR's website directly. It's been my favorite little piece of gear that I'm happy I never have to think about again, but a piece of gear that I use every time I pull out my backpacking cooking pan. As always, I'm Milo Tash. Thanks for watching.